G'day folks. Today I'm going to show you how to set up your overhead reel or your bait caster reel. I'm using an Abu Garcia Revo. I've had it for a few years and it's quite a nice reel. It's not a top of the range. It cost me 230 bucks. Actually I got it for 200 because I sweet talked the guy at the tackle shop. But yeah, 200 bucks, 230 bucks, it's quite a good reel. But that's not what I'm here to tell you. I'm here to teach you how to set it up, how to rig it up, and just how to get it ready to go. At the moment, the spool is empty. I've just stripped the old line off. It was a bit old, it was a bit worn out. Time for some new line. Maxima braid. So I'm going to try that. Ever since I was a teenager, I've been a huge fan of Maxima Ultra Green. My good mate Matt Hancock and I started using it back in the late 80s, early 90s. We used to catch redfin and carp and trout with the four and six pound, and I've been using it ever since. A couple of times I've tried different lines and different variants of Maxima even. For example, Maxima Treasure is a great line, but I just find the knot strength is better with the Ultra Green. I find the Ultra Green stretches more than the Treasure, so the Treasure has more sensitivity. It's got to weigh out what suits you, but I love the Ultra Green. Years ago I used to use spider wire, then I went on to, I think it was Gorilla Braid back in the day. Then I found one that I really liked and I settled on it for quite a long time. It was called, it was called Remington Power Locked and it was really good line. But then the Remington Power Locked was really hard to find, it just disappeared. I don't know whether they stopped producing it or distributing it or just, yeah it was a discontinued line, I don't know. But the Power Locked was a great line. Then I tried several others which I couldn't sort of settle on one. Then I started using fins. Finn's braid and to this day I think that's the best line that I've ever used for cod fishing. So it's taken me quite a bit to buy something different. There are so many different braids on the market. I've chosen the Maxima braid. The reason I'm using it is because I'm such a big fan of the Maxima Ultra Green. If the braid lives up to my expectations half as well as the Ultra Green, I'll be happy. If it doesn't, well I'll give it the arse and go back to the fins because I know the fins is a really good line. I can't tell you now whether this is good line or not, only time will tell, but I can tell you that fins is good. But okay, let's set this up. First you want to take it out of the box, naturally, it's a bit hard to throw it up while it's still in the box. Okay, I'll take the end off, a little Maxima sticker on the back here, get rid of all that. Now rather than just tie it straight to the reel, what I'm going to do is run it down through all of the runners of my rod, all of the eyes of my rod, and then tie it to the reel. So I'll start at the top. Go down. It's going by feel, it just looks a little bit thicker than the 50 pound fins. This is 50 pound incidentally. Down through all the runners. When I say runners, I'm not talking about Carl Lewis at the 1984 Los Angeles Olympic Games either. Or 88, I think it was, 80 something. I'm talking about the eyes on the rod. For some reason, they call them runners. I don't know why. Mine don't run, they don't go anywhere, they just stay there. Now, this is the most important thing you will learn on this video if you don't know it already. Some reels, if you look at that, you'll see there's holes inside the spool just here. You see those holes? What that allows me to do is poke my line through one of those holes and then tie a knot so that it can't slip. That's good and well if you've got a reel with holes in the barrel. Or I think they might call it fluted. If it's a fluted barrel like that, then you can t put the line through and tie it. The line can't slip. Very, very important. If your reel doesn't have those holes, if your reel isn't fluted, then you must put a little bit of monofilament line or nylon fishing line underneath. It doesn't need to be much, just four or five, ten meters even. And it can be four pound, two pound, ten pound, it doesn't matter. It's not there for strength. It's not there to stop the fish getting off the line, it is there to stop the line from slipping inside the reel. Otherwise, you will be turning your reel and the line might be turning, or you will pull on the line and it will spin and you will think your drag's too loose, you will lock the drag and it will still spin. And that's because the line is actually spinning around the spool. 
So you must use a small amount of monofilament line if you don't have holes in your reel to tie the line to. Thankfully for me, I can just go straight through those holes and tie it straight to the reel. First, you need to poke your, hole, your line through the level wind. If you don't go through the level wind, it won't work. It'll all wind in the one spot. The level wind moves backwards and forwards across the reel like that and lays the line evenly across the spool. Without the level wind, it'll all go in one spot. You then need to poke it through the holes in the spool. This can be quite tricky. Remember what I said, and it's very important. If you don't have holes in your spool, then you must, must, must use monofilament line on the bottom. Because tackle shops get a bit annoyed when people keep coming back and saying, there's something wrong with me reel because the line keeps slipping. Hey, here's a newsflash, it ain't the reel. Right, now I'm through there. Try that. Try that. Right, that's on me. Lock tight. See there, I've gone through the holes. I've tied it. Obviously, it can't slip. Can't go anywhere. I'll get some scissors or a knife, and I'll cut the tail off. Now the easy bit, I'm going to wind the line on. A lot of people like to get a mate to stand there and hold the spool and burn their thumbs and whatnot. I prefer to run the line through my fingers like this. I'll put the rod, put the rod up on my top of my leg like that. The line on the lens, piss off. <laughs> put the rod up there on my thigh like that. I use my fingers to regulate the pressure and I just wind it in. That, rear, that spool of line is just sitting there nice and smoothly right now. But here it goes, it's just starting to take off and run around the yard like a bloody four-year-old kid that's had too much red cordial. Doesn't matter where it goes, it's being regulated by my fingers and it's not burning. Monofilament line is a habit of burning your fingers when you do this. Just going through my fingers, that feels nice and smooth, that line. I'm quite liking it so far. The real test will come when I go to use it. You'll notice I haven't used backing. I'm not a big fan of backing on any reels. Except my fly reel. I just think that with backing, you're putting an extra knot in your spool when you tie the backing to your line. And when fishing with lures, whether you're spinning for trout, casting for Murray Cod or anything, the casting is the most critical part of the journey. If you can land your lure next to the bank or next to your log every time, you'll catch more fish. If you're landing it five or six feet away and you've got to make another cast all the time, you catch less fish. Alright. And there's my reel. All rigged, spooled up, with Maxima braid, ready to go another go, ready to go another cast. Now, I'll show you how to set the brake, so you know exactly how much resistance to use. Right, now I've just tied a big number one stump jumper on there, see that? It's not tied on properly, it's just a bit of a dodgy knot with lots of tails and stuff, I'll have to do a proper knot later. I've only just tied it on there quickly, this is a demo. I like the big number one stump jumpers, they're nice and heavy and they're a great casting lure. And they're quite cheap in comparison with a lot of other lures. On, normally on the inside near your reel, you'll see this little screw just here, this little ring. That's your casting brake. If you loosen that off, push the button in, it falls really quick. You watch, I'll take thumb off. Now what happens there, if the lure hits the ground and I don't put my thumb on it, I get an overspool, otherwise known as a bird nest. If I tighten it right up, when I lift that, well, that's not tight enough. If I tighten it right up, it doesn't turn at all. It doesn't turn enough. 
makes it too much break. What you want is for your lure to just fall at a nice, slow, even pace. So that's too tight. I'll loosen it a little bit. I'll stand back a bit. I'll loosen that a bit. That's not too bad. That's good. See how the lure just falls at a nice steady speed? That's what you want. If you have it too tight, when you go to cast, it won't cast far enough. If you have it too loose, when you go to cast, if a bit of wind hits the lure and just slows that lure down, you'll get a bird nest. Or if you haven't got your thumb on the spool firmly enough, you'll get a bird nest. By just tightening it to the right tension so that when the lure falls, it just falls under its own weight, you've got it about perfect. And you can just go out. Don't catch the roof of your shed. I've just cast that about 15 metres with a gentle little flick. Caught every blade of grass on my backyard. That's ready to go. So there it is. There's my reel. It's filled up with 50 pound Maxima braid, ready to go on trial. Like I said, if it's no good, I'll go back to the fins. Ready to go. Now I just think that I might sneak out the river this afternoon and just give it a little whirl. I hope you found this one helpful. What do you reckon, chickens? The chickens like it. Would you rather watch my YouTube videos or would you rather eat a bok 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 I just asked those four chickens. Four out of four chickens survey said they'd rather be eaten for lunchtime at Easter Sunday than they would at Christmas. But I can't help but think that if I was to run that survey again in March I might get a slightly different answer. <laughs>